Welcome to this airing of candidate videos produced by League of Women Voters Bloomington, with a special thank you to the City of Bloomington for the video production. League of Women Voters is a nonpartisan political organization that never endorses candidates or political parties. In these videos, you will hear from candidates for City Council. All candidates who filed to run for council were invited to record videos. They will speak to you about their priorities for Bloomington and their reasons for running for office. As you listen, keep in mind that ranked choice voting allows you to vote for the city council candidates on your ballot by your order of preference, meaning first choice, second choice, and so on. Hi everyone, I'm Nathan Coulter. I am thrilled to be running for a second term on the Bloomington City Council. I'm proud of the work that we've done and excited for the work we have ahead of us. These last few years have really forced all of us to refocus our priorities and just think about things differently. And I continue to be tremendously energized to keep moving forward and taking care of our neighbors. As far as my own background, I've lived in Bloomington my entire life. My mom taught math for 39 years at Normandale Community College, and my dad, who a fellow resident once referred to as, quote, the last honest attorney, had his office in Bloomington, too. By day, I work for and with our Bloomington legislators on important issues facing our community, and I live over by Old Town Hall with my wife, Charity, and our daughters, Eleanor, who's almost three, and Adeline, who was born this past July. I care so deeply about this city where my sisters and I grew up, where my parents worked, and where my kids will grow up too. I've already had so many wonderful conversations with our neighbors at their doors, and I'm looking forward to having many more opportunities to talk about my record. But we all know that there is more work to do, and I am ready and eager to talk about where we go from here. Bloomington deserves nothing less than a full and serious discussion of the issues, and I have long believed that elections should be won on a vision for the future, not simply reliving or relitigating the past. I believe that budget decisions are policy decisions. I was thrilled with the work that our Community Budget Advisory Committee did to ensure that our values were at the center of our budget discussions as we navigated the effects of the pandemic. The result preserved funding for the core basic services our neighbors need with a levy increase that was lower than every city around us and half of what Minneapolis, Richfield, and Edina had. We need to continue finding new ways to ensure that the broad array of needs, wants, and ambitions in Bloomington is reflected in our budgets. Everyone having a safe, stable place to live is critical to the success of our entire community. We have taken on addressing the affordable housing crisis by passing our Opportunity Housing Ordinance and revolutionized how cities think about affordable housing development. We need to continue to refine and refocus our efforts on unmet needs and ensure that we have a life cycle of housing for our residents. I hear from almost everyone I talk to about how they'd like to see more small and locally owned businesses, especially places to eat and drink. We created our Small Business Emergency Assistance Loan Program, made the process of opening a restaurant easier, and of course, paved the way for breweries and tap rooms. We need to continue supporting businesses and workers and work to provide a fuller measure of opportunity, success, and stability for everyone who contributes to our economy. George Floyd's murder last year resulted in both a national and an intensely local reckoning on race and our city council responded. We declared that racism is what we know it to be, a public health crisis. We adopted a racial equity business plan to govern internal city operations and empowered a racial equity strategic planning committee to bring forward concrete actions we can take to address racial inequities that we know exist in our community. We need to continue moving forward, having the hard but needed conversations and coming to grips with the reality of systemic racism. Now, I could go on about our park system master plan, future-focused redevelopment, or proactively having conversations with folks in all 32 precincts in Bloomington. Suffice it to say, 
I love doing this work, and I have never been more confident in our potential as a community or more excited for what the future holds. I have always believed that a vote is more than simply expressing a preference. Your vote is an investment in the kind of community you want to see. I know that folks here in Bloomington take that investment very seriously, as you should, because our city is worth it. I have worked hard every day I've been on the City Council to prove worthy of the investment that Bloomington voters made in me, and I am ready and eager to continue doing just that. I'm asking for your vote because the next few years have so much in store for us. Let's get to work. Thank you. Hello, my name is Rick Oliva and I'm running for Bloomington City Council at large. I'm a lifelong resident of Bloomington, grew up here, went to elementary school here, graduated from Kennedy, so go Eagles. Now I'm raising my three kids here in the city that I grew up in. I am committed to public service. I have volunteered at the kids' schools. I volunteer baseball coach, among other things, and also I volunteered on several school board committees before finally uh, serving four years on the school board including one as school board chair that was four years ago so now fast forward four years and i'm running for city council in part because i believe that our city council could benefit from more diversity of opinion on the council and i feel like my commitment to balancing stakeholder input fiscal responsibility and individual freedoms really brings a, a fresh perspective to the city council and would positively impact our city. I want to talk a minute about some of the philosophies that I have uh, uh, around governance. With liberty and justice for all, I don't really think that's just a tagline. I think it's really important that all people in our city are treated fairly, equally, and with respect, regardless of socioeconomic status, gender, race, etc believe in government by the people for the people. As I mentioned uh, before, it's really important that all groups are represented, not just certain groups or special interest groups having undue influence on our city. And maybe even most importantly is fiscal responsibility. It's important that the city is good stewards of the people's money and that they adequately balance wants versus needs. Some of my priorities, if I were to be elected, would be public safety and infrastructure. One of the most important aspects of city government is doing those things that would be difficult, if not impossible, for us to maintain ourselves. For instance, I don't want to have to fix the potholes in front of my house. I don't want to have to pave the street myself. I don't want to have to lay a sidewalk. I don't want to have to hire my own fire department in case my house burns down. I think it's important that the city takes care of those and makes that those things their top priority. Moving on, we talk about the common good. It's things like, for instance, if we can all agree that driving 90 miles per hour on a residential street would be bad and against the common good, then the city can work to determine what set of laws we can all agree to live by so that way we can live in peace and harmony in our community. Like, for instance, some roads it might be 40, some it might be 30. You might say in a school zone you can only go 10 or 15 miles an hour. So that's the role of a city government as I see it. The other thing is taking care of community values, the things in our community that we value. So for instance, um, the, the water park or, or, um, or big, not everything is going to be cost neutral, not everything is going to make us money, but if we value it, then we should work to keep it. I've had people ask me things like, why should I pay for libraries? I buy my own books, so my taxes shouldn't go to libraries. Well. Many in our community believe that libraries provide value for the research potential that they, that they give us for those who maybe can't get books, or we can find things that we wouldn't otherwise have had access to. Same with the water park. It might not be uh, cost 
uh, positive, but the community values it. It's sort of like big. If the ice garden were to go away, a lot of people in our community, I think, would be devastated. So it's important that we hold on to those things that we value, including public parks, so on and so forth. The last thing I want to talk about is partisanship. City Council should be nonpartisan. Whether or not a road gets fixed, whether or not parks get updated, playground equipment gets upgraded, should have nothing to do with par partisan politics. Um, it's, it, it's important uh, that the city sticks to city business and tries to stay out of partisanship as much as possible. And so from, from that perspective, I'm not seeking any endorsement from any political party or any outside group because I don't want to look like I am beholden to any outside interests other than those things that I've stated so far. So if that sounds good to you, or if you'd like more information, you can check me out on the web at olivacitycouncil.com or Facebook, facebook.com slash olivacitycouncil. You can email me at rick at olivacitycouncil.com or even call or text me 952-250-3638. But please do it before 9 p.m. Thank you and have a great day. Hello Bloomington, my name is David Clark and I've lived in Bloomington for 18 years. I'm running for city council at dis in District 3. Before I get started, I just want to tell you a quick story about a guy by the name of Rip Van Winkle. You might have read the story in high school. Rip Van Winkle was written back in the 1820s and it was about a guy who just got fabulously drunk with one of his friends one night and he fell asleep for 20 years. When he woke up, he could not recognize his town. His friends had moved away, some family members had died, some had gotten married, the Revolutionary War was over. He was just trying to make sense of what had happened to his city. Well, that same thing happened to me two years ago when somebody got shot and murdered just two blocks from my home on 86th and Penn. Then Kevin, the owner of Penn Lake Roast Beef, where I buy sandwiches every Saturday, he got gunned down in broad daylight in his store last summer and almost died on his sidewalk in front of the store. Folks, that shattered my sense of innocence about Bloomington from a public safety standpoint. I started looking at the statistics and started looking at the police calls, the, the robbery reports, catalytic converters getting stolen in broad daylight. Our city is not the place that it used to be. Then I started looking at the numbers. I started looking at the tax revenues in the city. Taxes kept going up. Every time I opened my property tax statement, it was going up, not by 10 or $20, but by hundreds of dollars every single year. In fact, since I moved here in 2003, my property taxes have doubled. So I started looking at that, and I discovered that this city, in 2015, just a few years ago, our budget was only $125 million. Today, it's almost $200 million. Folks, we have a city council and a manager and a mayor who is addicted to spending other people's money, your money. So I'm here to fight for you. I'm here to put the brakes on the spending in this town. We have hundreds of millions of dollars of bonding in the years ahead. We have tax levies that are going to be increasing our taxes by 60 to 70% in the next 10 years. Our city cannot handle that kind of spending, and I'm here to hold the line for you. The third thing I noticed in our town was the way that this city council governs. They don't govern for you. They could care less about you. All they care about is the outside special interests and the big money and the other groups that are coming in to try to push their way around. They did that last year with ranked choice voting. They, they brought in a group called Fair Vote Minnesota. Well, there's nothing fair about it. And now we have ranked choice voting. There was an uproar that ensued, but the city council wanted it and they got it. The next thing that they did was they, they restricted the parent, parental rights of tens of thousands of parents in Bloomington who wanted to make medical decisions for their kids. They stripped their rights away. The third thing they did was they stripped the rights of people, grown adults, to buy flavored tobacco. And the shop owners that sell flavored tobacco, sometimes those, those products make up 40 to 50 percent of their revenue. There are businesses in Bloomington, many of them immigrants and minorities, they are going to go bankrupt because of this new rule. This city council is governing with a heavy hand, and they're governing for the special interests and not for you. So folks, I'm a small business owner. I have to fight for every dollar. I'm also a commercial pilot. I've trained for thousands of hours and flown dozens of years, 
and have been trained by the FAA and by airlines to be able to look out and see things in the, on the distance, on the horizon. Sometimes we look two, three hundred miles into the, into the horizon to be able to see things and try to take care of them before they happen. I'm going to put those same skills to work for you. If you're interested in more of the same, then you're going to get more of the same. But if you want change on the city council, I am your candidate. David Clark for city council. David Clark, District 3. We need to replace the nonsense that's going on with common sense. And I am your candidate. Now, because of ranked choice voting, there are several other candidates that think like me. And I'd like to ask you to rank them as well. The rule with ranked choice voting is you don't rank those who you oppose. And so I ask you to rank David Clark, Kevin Heinen, and Laura Hunt. David Clark, Kevin Heinen, and Laura Hunt. If you rank our, us, we have the best chance to take this seat and to bring true representation for the, for the common person on the city council. If you're a senior, if you're an immigrant, if you're a young family trying to get started, you want somebody to fight for you. I am that person. And so I want to ask for your vote. Vote for David Clark, District 3. DavidClarkForCityCouncil.com is my website, DavidClarkForCityCouncil.com. We want to take Bloomington from good to great, folks. We have a great future ahead, but not if we tax and spend our way into oblivion. We need to fight for our financial security, our public security, and for a government that is responsive to you. God bless Bloomington, and we'll see you on Election Day. Hi, I'm Lona D'Alessandro. I'm grateful to the League of Women Voters Bloomington for the opportunity to ask for your first choice vote to be the next city council member for Bloomington District 3. I want to first tell you a little bit about myself. I was born in Virginia. I was raised on the East Coast, graduated from Penn State University, and have since in lived in some of the best cities in America until 2008 when I settled here in the Twin Cities to work at Best Buy. I'm the product of a talented and creative family with a track record of service. My dad spent his career in the U.S. Army, and my mom served our church as a cantor and a lector. I put myself through college as a short order cook, graduating in 1991 with a degree in science. I later earned my MBA through employer-funded scholarship and have since earned, uh, enjoyed a 20-plus year career as a, an executive leading teams of innovators as we bring new technology services to market for a variety of industries. My wife, Sarah, and I moved to Bloomington for the same reason so many other people do, access to incredible amenities like our parks, the comparatively affordable living conditions, and the convenience afforded by its location. But it was obvious to us that people here care about each other, work hard, and truly take pride in their community. Bloomington is a gateway of good fortune for new residents, a model of intergenerational stability and prosperity, and a leader in environmental sustainability at a time when we need loud voices acting on climate change. As we residents and the economy recover from the effects of the pandemic, it is more important than ever to have a leader who cares deeply that we provide high quality services to our seniors, enable growth for our community owned businesses, and lay down financial and sustainable foundations for our families. I'm that leader. I'm committed to supporting policies that can accelerate growth for our small businesses, a vital economic sector. We can think creatively about incentives, credits, permits, and other adjustments to move, remove barriers that might prevent revitalization post-pandemic. And we should also take a long-term lens to the kinds of businesses, large and small, that we want to attract to Bloomington, while working with our Convention and Visitors Bureau and the Chamber on projects like the Lindale Avenue retrofit. Additionally, we must think long term about how to effectively support our seniors who make up more than 25% of the population here in Bloomington. I look forward to working with our residents to take a critical look at the public services in housing, health, and transportation that are offered today, determine the best options for new services, and engage with them consistently as their needs change. But above all, I am blessed to live in a place that values its natural spaces. I have a keen appreciation for the positive impact that access to nature has on mental and physical health. 
I am committed to ensuring the vitality of our open spaces, to working with the city government to make sure that we take the best ideas from the parks master plan and put them to use, and to ensuring that we have climate change goals met or exceeded with all of our new development. I decided to seek this office because we need a leader who is willing to be proactive and ready to serve this diverse and wonderful community. For years, I've worked as a business executive to make sure that communities across the Twin Cities are more prosperous and fought on behalf of our residents as a civic leader, church uh, organizer, and volunteer. Now, as your city council member, I am ready to help grow and nourish Bloomington, putting my experience and relationships to work for all of our families. I want you to place your trust in me to bring new ideas to how the city can support its community as it grows, and I commit to being transparent and empathetic about how we go about it. Like I said, we've lived a lot of places, and Bloomington is the first place that's truly felt like home. It is a city founded in fiscal responsibility and sincere care for its residents. We are rooted here, and it would be the honor of a lifetime to serve you as a city council member. I hope you will join me and the many other residents already committed to this campaign by moving forward with a renewed vision for meaningful change and a commitment to what truly is worth protecting. For more information, visit www.voteforlona.com. Once again, please select me as your first choice vote for Bloomington City Council District 3. Thank you. Hi, my name is Angela Coyle. I'm running for City Council in District 4. The reason I'm running for City Council is I moved to Bloomington a few years ago because it was a family-friendly, open, welcoming community. And I feel like every person who moves into Bloomington or lives here should feel that way. Uh, Bloomington should be very welcoming. We all should feel as a valued person in our community. Um, a few of the things that I will fight for is to be a voice for the resident. Anyone who wants to come to me with concerns or have open discussions, I will respectfully listen. I will respectfully fight for you. I will be your voice. Uh, my focuses will be ensuring our tax dollars are used to the best of our abilities and to benefit all residents in Bloomington. Uh, another point would be to keep uh, Valley View Park the way it is. Every time I go by there, it's in constant use by several residents, and all the residents that I've spoken to around Valley View express their concerns with it changing. That's an $85 million project that that money could be used elsewhere, like Creekside. We could use that money to rehab Creekside and provide a place for our Bloomington seniors to go. Several seniors enjoy Creekside, as well as keeping Bloomington uh, Valley View Park open. Another agenda that I would fight for is our green spaces, ensuring people of all ages have a green space they can enjoy, whether it's children at a park and a playground or single adults just resting and relaxing, enjoying the scenery or walking on the trails. Also, I feel public safety is a huge agenda. Each resident needs to feel safe and secure in their community. I support law enforcement and first responders. 
And as a single mother, I feel like families should be able to raise their children or live in a peaceful community. Um, another thing that I will fight for or a high priority would be using tax dollars very fiscally. So get out there and use your voice on November 2nd. Please consider me. I've been a, a Bloomington resident for the last few years and I would love to represent you. Thank you. Howdy everyone, Council Member Patrick Martin asking for your support as I run for re-election as the East Side's representative in District 4. Last time I talked to you, last time we recorded one of these videos, uh, I shared a little bit about my service on city boards and commissions, uh, my work in my career supporting food banks and shelters across the Twin Cities, and I shared how excited I was to provide a strong voice on the City Council representing Bloomington's East Side. And now I'm excited to share how I've used that voice to help reinvest in our neighborhoods empower our residents, and begin to reimagine what is possible here in Bloomington. Now first, I have been a fierce advocate for reinvesting in our neighborhoods. I was proud to help uh, expand our home rehabilitation loan program, providing a boost to folks that wanted to fix up older properties. I was excited to help establish the first dedicated pool of funding for sidewalk repair, uh, expand our trail network, improve our pedestrian crossings, and modernize our fire stations across this city. We've charted a new course for our older strip malls and created the Gateway Development District to provide the funding necessary to get projects moving. For more than 50 years, East Bloomington has been the foundation of our growth and economic prosperity. And with the investments we're making now, that'll stay true for a half century to come. Now second, and just as important, I've been passionate about working to empower our residents to help guide our future. Just after I started on Council, I established transparency and engagement as one of the key strategic pillars of the work the Council does. Now, coming out of that, we streamlined our meetings to make it easier for folks to participate. We began, began broadcasting all of that work so you could follow along at home. And we launched new engagement platforms so that you could weigh in on dozens of important topics when it was most convenient for you. You've helped establish the first Parks Master Plan this city has had in decades. And with the new Community Budget Advisory Committee, helped steer us through the pandemic and emerge stronger financially than we were before. I, I will say with a lot of confidence that more than ever before, each and every corner of Bloomington is being heard at City Hall. Now with that reinvestment in our neighborhoods and alongside empowered and engaged residents, we're beginning to reimagine what is possible here in Bloomington. And I'll give you a quick example. Uh, so I was recently invited to tour Blooming Meadows Apartments off 86th and Old Shock. That's about two blocks from my house. And it was such a cool opportunity because not too long ago, the apartments had been up for sale. And there was a good chance they would be gutted, flipped into luxury units, and those hundreds of families would get shown the door. But because I and my colleagues on council had established a housing trust fund to help protect properties like that, and passed an opportunity housing ordinance to make it easier to improve them, a Twin Cities nonprofit was able to purchase Blooming Meadows, breathe overdue new life into it, and allow those hundreds of families to stay rooted in our community. Allow those hundreds and hundreds of kids to stay safe and in place in the city they call home. And I mention that because when I was a little kid, Blooming Meadows was my home. And a lot of those families that are there now was a lot like my family then. My dad was a hardware salesman uh, during the day. He restocked those little drawers uh, at Ace Hardware type places. Uh, and at night to help make ends meet, he worked as the building security guard. He used to take me on patrols when I was little. Uh, my mom was a brand new Northwest Airlines flight attendant, grinding out red-eye flight after red-eye flight to help keep that roof over our heads, uh, to give me the shot uh, that I've had my whole life. And I'm running for re-election as your council member because I have seen firsthand, like so many of you, what is possible here in Bloomington. That it's possible for Bloomington to be a city where every family can put down roots and thrive. Where every family feels welcomed and heard and shown respect that Bloomington can be a place where every family has a shot at raising their neighborhood's future city council member. Bloomington is so much more than just another suburb, parks and paths and uh, road work and water pipes. I know it's deeper than that. And in knocking on thousands of doors and talking to so many of our, my neighbors, I'm excited that you know it too. 
So I'm asking for your support in this re-election campaign so that together we can continue investing in our neighborhoods, empowering our neighbors to guide our future, and overall realize the incredible possibilities Bloomington has before it. Uh, thank you so much to the League of Women Voters for helping to, to put this opportunity together. And thank each and every one of you that are watching, uh, because local stuff like this truly is the most important. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you to the candidates for appearing in these videos. Voters, remember to vote in the general election on November 2nd. To learn more about voting and registering to vote, go to the Minnesota Secretary of State's website, mnvotes.org. Did you know it's an election year? Bloomington residents will now use ranked choice voting in city elections. You may be wondering, what is ranked choice voting? We all use ranked choice voting in making decisions every day, like when deciding what transportation to use or what activity to do. It works the same way with voting. Instead of choosing just one candidate, you select up to six candidates in order of preference. If more than six candidates file, you can still only choose your top six. If less than six file, the number of choices, or rankings, will equal the number of candidates. In this example, Maria is trying to decide which Bloomington facility she wants to go to with her friends to participate in an activity they like. Maria loves to swim, so the Family Aquatic Center is her first choice. But, if the weather is too cold, her second choice would be the Center for the Arts Galleries, followed by Creekside Community Center to visit friends, and the Bloomington Ice Garden to check out Open Skate. If Maria and her friends marked these decisions on a ballot, they would mark their first, second, third, and fourth decisions, voting left to right and top to bottom, and making only one choice in each box. On election day, you will use this same process to rank the candidates on your ballot. These votes are then counted in rounds. In round number one, all of the first choice votes are counted. If a candidate gets more than 50% of the first choice votes, that candidate is the winner. If no candidate gets more than 50%, the candidate with the least number of first choice votes is eliminated, and their votes are transferred to those voters' next highest choice. Totals are then recalculated and this process of elimination continues until one candidate has received more than 50% of the votes. Maria and her friends will visit the Center for the Arts. For more information on ranked choice voting and city elections, go to blm.mn vote. 